Hello, I'm Sama Bilbao Leon, Director General of World Nuclear Association. And I am delighted to be introducing the World Nuclear Performance Report 2025, a comprehensive summary of the most recent construction and operating performance of the world's nuclear reactors. But before we get to the results themselves, I think it's important to put them into the context of the energy challenges that we are facing today. The demand for clean, reliable power is soaring, driven not only for the growing demand for the conventional uses of electricity, but also by new sectors of the economy, like data servers and artificial intelligence. And as the new performance report demonstrates, nuclear power has already shown what it can do. In 2024, the world reached a record 2,667 terawatts hour of nuclear generation, proof of its unmatched potential. But here is the truth. That record must be broken again and again and again every single year, because meeting our global energy and climate goals demands it. So how do we get there? I think it is a two-pronged approach. First, we must maximize the performance on today's reactors, extending their lifetimes, improving their efficiency, and making sure every unit delivers at its best. But second, and even more urgent, we must accelerate new nuclear construction on a scale the world hasn't seen in decades. But we really are not alone in this ambition. A growing coalition of industry leaders from Amazon and Google to Meta, Dow, all seas, is calling for the same future. One where nuclear energy powers progress, innovation and prosperity. And more than 30 countries all over the world have declared their support for a global goal to triple nuclear energy by 2050. So the decisions that we make today will shape the energy systems of the 30s and beyond. And this is our moment to act with courage and to build faster, build bigger, and more importantly, build together. Because the challenge is immense, but so is the opportunity. So if governments, industry, investors, and communities unite behind this mission, we really, really can achieve it. We can triple global nuclear capacity, we can secure the energy future, and we can create a cleaner, more sustainable world for everybody, everywhere. And now, to go into some of the key findings of this year's World Nuclear Performance Report, I am incredibly happy to introduce my colleague, Jonathan Kov, who is the lead author of the report. So, Jonathan, please. Thanks, Emma. In 2024, the world's nuclear reactors generated a record 2,667 terawatt-hours of electricity, surpassing the previous record of 2,660 terawatt-hours set back in 2006. That total was 66 terawatt hours higher than the previous year, with France making a particularly strong contribution. French reactors added an extra 40 terawatt hours as units continued to return to service after the outages of 2022 and 2023. This recovery helped reverse the downward trend in generation seen in Western Central Europe. The most striking growth, however, was in Asia, where nuclear generation exceeded 800 terawatt hours for the first time more than double the region's output just 10 years ago. Part of this increase came from Japanese reactors returning to service after reauthorization, but the bulk of the growth was driven by new reactors coming online, mainly in China, but also in South Korea, the UAE, India and Pakistan. On performance, the global average capacity factor rose to 83%, up 1% from 2023. High capacity factors like this have now been sustained for more than two decades. This improvement in performance can be seen more clearly in the next chart. It shows reactors grouped by capacity percentiles. The darkest blue bars represent reactors achieving over 90% capacity, a level achieved by more than a third of reactors in recent years. Around two thirds of reactors consistently achieve 
above 80% capacity factors. Importantly, these are averages across all operating reactors worldwide. In fact, some of the best performance comes from the oldest reactors, those with more than 50 years of operating experience. Our next chart looks at electricity production by reactor age. The youngest reactors appear in reds and oranges, while the oldest reactors appear in blues and purples. So the large wave of construction in the 1970s and 80s, shown in the large red peak then, is now represented by today's output in the blues and purple segments. A new wave of construction over the last decade is visible as a red peak to the right. By contrast, because relatively few reactors were built in 15 to 25 years ago, the bar for 2024 shows only a small number of greens and cyans representing reactors of those ages. So that's the picture for existing reactors. But what about new ones? In 2024, seven reactors were connected to the grid, three in China and one each in the United States, India, France and the United Arab Emirates. Construction times varied widely from just 61 months for Zhangzhou 1 to 204 months for Flamanville 3. Longer construction times at Vogtel, Kak Rapa and Flamanville reflect the challenges of early builds of reactors of those types. However, the CAP 1400 at Shidawan is also a first of, reactor, first of a kind design, but based on proven technology. This was completed in less than six years. While seven reactors started up, only four shut down. Pickering 1 and 4 in Canada, Kurs 2 in Russia, and Mangshan 1 in Taiwan. That left a net increase of three reactors, bringing the total worldwide to 440 units. Construction also began on nine reactors, six in China, and one each in Egypt, Russia, and Pakistan. By the end of 2024, 48 of the 63 reactors under construction were in Asia including 29 in China. This confirms that Asia will remain the centre of nuclear growth for the rest of this decade, if not further. Outside of Asia, only Russia, Egypt and the United Kingdom have more than one reactor actively under construction. Although in the United States, several previously closed reactors are at various stages of restarting. World Nuclear Performance Report 2025 also provides country by country updates. For example, the China section illustrates the dramatic growth in generation seen in that country over the past 25 years. The USA section shows consistently high capacity factors and highlights the enormous carbon dioxide emission avoidance by using nuclear energy, compared to if the same electricity had been produced from coal or gas. We also highlight two case studies. The first looks at measures taken during the construction and operation of reactors in China to protect the local environment. For example, at the Hong Yanhe nuclear plant, CGN formulated strict management regulations for construction shipping, as excessive noise from ship engines could have disturbed the local population of spotted seals. The second case study looks to the future. Size will see a two-unit EPR plan to be built on the east coast of the United Kingdom has just received a positive final investment decision, with the site preparation already underway. With the UK grid planned to have an increasing proportion of intermittent solar and wind generation, new nuclear units like Sizewell C will play a key role in balancing supply and demand and ensuring grid stability. Reactors can follow demand but their output can also be redirected into other applications, such as industrial steam, hydrogen production, or direct air capture of carbon dioxide. You can find more details of these case studies, along with a full review of nuclear performance and construction in the World Nuclear Performance Report 2025, available online at world-nuclear.org. But for now, from Sama and myself, thank you for listening and goodbye.